Hi guys, you are watching Biology with Insura and in today's video we are going to talk about enzymes. Now before we talk about enzymes, we must first understand what is a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. Similarly, we have an enzyme that is a biological catalyst, which means um, a substance speeding up the rate of a chemical reaction within a living organism or you could say that an enzyme is a protein that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction in the human body now um, before we get deeper into this concept you must first understand that proteins by nature are very vulnerable to changes in the temperature or pH whether the temperature is too high or too low or whether it gets too acidic or too alkaline then this can be dangerous as this can directly affect the rate at which the enzyme functions in our body, we have millions of chemical reactions that occur every minute. For instance, the reaction respiration happens constantly to manufacture energy in the form of ATP, which is needed um, to enable other life activities to occur. For instance, cell, div cell division or maybe even clotting when um, there's a wound on our hand. Now, these are some of the um, processes that need um, energy and if there's no energy then those um, processes or reactions will take forever to occur and that's where enzymes come in now, what these enzymes do is that they speed up the rate at which the chemical reactions occur so that life can be easily um, sustained and maintained and if it hadn't been for these enzymes that the reactions in our body would happen at such a slow rate that we humans wouldn't even be alive as um, it wouldn't happen fast enough to sustain and maintain the activities or, or the life within us. Now there are certain benefits as to why enzymes are used whether in our bodies or maybe even in industries or factories like in the manufacture of rubber. The first one is that um, they speed up the rate of the chemical reaction, that's one. The second would be is that they remain chemically unchanged at the end. Yes, chemically unchanged at the end. Thirdly, um, they can be used over and over again. Yes, um, there's no limit. You can use an, en you can use an enzyme uh, multiple times. And then the other reason is because what, uh, they lower the amount of energy or temperature needed, which means they're cost effective. Like in factories or industries, since you're using, you're using an enzyme, you don't need to use a high temperature or you don't require high energy. So you're basically saving electricity, which is good for the environment. And you're also saving a lot on money, which is both cost effective and economically effective. Now, in the last part, I said that they um, lower the energy. But before we move on, there's one other advantage you guys need to know. And, and that advantage is that enzymes are used in minute or very small amounts. They're able to catalyze um, a very large reaction, regardless of being minute in amount. For example, you guys, when you wash clothes, you're using washing powder and washing powder contains enzymes. Those enzymes are very minute in amount and they're able to wash a large number of clothes. They can be used over and over again. They remain chemically unchanged and they also speed up the rate at which your clothes are washed. Now when I say um, enzymes lower the amount of energy needed, I'm, what I mean is that they lower the amount of activation energy. Now activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to start a reaction. What this means is that this is the minimum amount of energy required to give a kickstart to any reaction to enable the movement of atoms or molecules. And this part of the process or reaction requires a lot of energy in the form of heat, which of course um, involves the usage of electricity and also requires a lot of money being used, especially in industries or factories. If you look at the graph right in front of you, you can see that the red line or the red curve shows that um, the reaction without the energy sorry without the enzyme i'm really sorry about that so the um, reaction without the enzyme takes longer and the blue curve shows that the um, reaction with the enzyme happens at a faster rate but if you notice um they both happen and ev eventually the product is formed in both circumstances but the only difference is, is that with the enzyme it, it is formed faster and without the enzyme it is formed a lot slower you just have to wait a lot more and then you have to um, uh, give it more energy and invest more time money energy that's the only difference and that is why you can see that um, the blue curve is not as steep as the red curve and this is why enzymes are very efficient 
and they are often preferred in industries or in maybe even in factories. Moving on, we then have the lock and key hypothesis. But before we move further, let's first discuss what a hypothesis is. Now, a hypothesis is a proposed scientific explanation or maybe a, an explanation of a scientific phenomena. It can be either wrong or correct or it is just a guess maybe from maybe from just a few evidence however not it is not purely based on a guess but it is often based on evidence that is obtained from the researcher and this type of research can be further researched or extended by future individuals who may wish to add more to this hypothesis and this is a hypothesis that has that has been proposed by many scientists in the past regarding the enzyme activity which means how enzymes work to catalyze reactions. Now, in this hypothesis, we, we actually know that um, enzymes speed up the reaction. But how? Let's discuss that. Now, the substance on which the enzyme acts on is called the substrate. Fair enough, easy. The substrate word implies that um, it is a substance. And then there is a small depression, or you can say a groove, or even a pocket on the surface of the protein enzyme, and that is called the active site, as you can see um, at the picture. Now what happens is that during the um, enzyme activity, the substrate or the substance that wants to be catalyzed or wants to be sped up in a reaction has a particular shape that has to be complementary to that of the active site of the enzyme or else it will not fit and the reaction will not take place. Now since the substrate is moving, we call that the substrate is the key and the enzyme not moving is the lock as indicated by the lock and key hypothesis. So the substrate fits into the active site of the enzyme and when they have successfully bonded or combined with the help of hydrogen or other types of covalent bonds, the the substrate is catalyzed and this for this results in the formation of the enzyme substrate complex as you can see and when the substrate is successfully broken down or um, catalyzed it is released the products are released and the enzyme is chemically unchanged and, and is ready to catalyze another reaction now i've written down a few key points here on the green screen you can see here um just go through them but i've discussed the main parts which i hope you guys have listened to but just to make it a bit clearer and for your ease i've written down the main key points for you guys now there are more things to understand in this topic for instance um how enzymes can be denatured or what is denaturation or how can enzymes be affected by um, drastic changes in the temperature or how can enzymes be affected by drastic changes in the ph and some examples some examples of um, enzymes would be um, amylase or lipase or even protease pepsin trypsin that they're involved in the digestion of um, food in our human body we then have the enzyme catalase, which is abundant in the liver and blood of mammals. And there is a toxic um, substance called hydrogen peroxide, which is, which, is, which, is a, which is a nitrogenous waste and has to be broken down very quickly. And that is done with the help of the enzyme catalase, which enables this particular um, substance to be broken down faster. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a clear concept on some of the basic um, terminologies and basic concepts of the topic enzyme and in part two we will be talking about denaturation and how enzymes are affected from high temperatures or low temperatures and some examples as well as al always keep learning don't forget to um, follow my facebook page and subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll be making weekly content for you guys that's it for now take care bye